fast forward to today, I am actually moving on to the stage or the next stage of my natural hair journey. And I literally do not know what that stage is going to be. <laughs> All I know is that I, I am liberating myself. Hey girl, in this video, we're talking about my natural hair journey and it's a different natural hair journey. It's literally the stages of my natural hair journey and what I've been through all the way since I discovered the natural hair community until today. And I'm gonna take you on a journey with pictures and videos. We're gonna be watching and reacting to some of the videos, okay? Some of the things I used to do are unbelievable, like, you did that <laughs> this is gonna be an interesting one you guys let's get into it all right so i discovered the natural hair community some mm, 12 plus years ago now it's been a while it's been a while girl and i started making videos around about the same time i believe yeah 2012 20 30 somewhere there i may be wrong but roughly and girl if you have watched me since that time you can see that i have gone through some stages as a natural i have come a long way and i feel you when people say oh youtubers one day they're saying this the other they're saying that and that's because we're actually real people. We change our minds, we evolve, our, pre our preferences change, we mature, we grow up, we go through stuff, we experience things. Experience teaches you, I mean, <laughs> yeah, we're not robots. So it's, it's a good and bad thing. I think it's a good thing because you get realness. You get real people sharing real experiences, if you're honest. But then the downside of that is that you get, you know, what seems to be conflicting information but truly it isn't you can really literally find any type of youtuber you want to find and follow that aligns with where you're at in your journey because really it's it's very little i'm starting to realize less maybe about clicks and all oh, these are the team relax so this is team what it's just a stage we're different stages recently cheesy duru came out and she wore a weave talking about freeing herself and i mean we know cheesy has not been able to grow her hair like forever <laughs> bless her soul but um yeah she has adopted modesty she's now really pursuing a modest life um and she has freed herself from trying to always you know never use heat or always wear her natural hair and always do this like she's at a stage where she's over that and a few naturals have come out wow, she's not the only one some have gone back to relaxers some are straight natural some wear wash and goes um some when big chopped their hair some dyed their hair okay so my journey as a youtuber started as a all day washer wash day was a day thing maybe two days or three days because i would sleep with a deep condition i wake up have oils dripping down my face, oil everywhere on my pillow, etc. Girl, I enjoyed it because I was discovering my hair. It was fun while 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 it lasted. It was great. Um, that lasted for years. Honestly, I thought that's the only way to look after your hair. This is what we have to do. This is what it means to embrace your hair. This is what it means to love your hair. Um, but I quickly got tired of washing my hair the whole day, every week. Okay. <laughs> I was a daily week. I was an all day weekly washer. I was pretty much dedicating 24 plus hours to my hair. No, I don't want to say 24 plus hours. Okay. So maybe 12 hours, let's say 12 hours because it was half day and maybe a little bit the following day. I quickly understood that that was not realistic. It's good to have natural hair. If you if that's your thing, go for it. Like I'm not bashing anyone who's at any of these stages, okay? I'm just I'm talking about my journey. I quickly realized I could not sustain it. It was not sustainable. Uh so while still being a weekly washer, 
while still being an all day washer, I became a product junkie. Trying this out for moisture, trying this out for a sealant, trying this out as a butter, as a twist out uh, product. Oh, Shea Butter's gonna do this. Shea Butter's gonna fix all your problems in your life. I became a product junkie. I was a student, but girl, I was going broke buying this, buying the other, buying this, buying the other. And I blame YouTube because they, they really make, I shouldn't say they, we <laughs> really make you feel like this is the next, this is the best thing you can ever buy for your hair. Must get it now. Product junkie turned to heat. I started getting exhausted with my hair. So I started using heat. I didn't know what I was doing, girl. I remember doing a flat iron. I don't know if I have a video for it, but I put this iron on top of, you know, lots of conditioner and lots of oil. I was pretty much frying my hair. It it was fried. And yeah, I didn't like it. From then on, because I, I flat ironed my hair a few times, it was a disaster. After that, um, that's when I actually experienced really chronic dryness with my hair and decided to big chop. Yep. Cut more, all my hair up. 2027 2017 cut all my hair out big chopped and started afresh i was crazy to chop my hair out oh that's never gonna happen again <laughs> we're never chopping our hair off ever again we love hair we're gonna transition out we're gonna do what it needs yeah no we're not going bold but anyway i chopped my hair out at that stage a lot of people were actually big chopping their hair so it seemed cool Honestly, I enjoyed the look of the hair, like the styling was great. I had a nice little part here. I love to see my head shape and all that. But after a week or so, I'm like, uh, where my hair at? I miss my hair. I miss my hair. Where is my hair? And that's the reality for a lot of us that big chop our hair. It's nice for a bit, but then for people that love hair, you quickly realize you miss your hair. And I quickly realized how long it would take me to regrow my hair girl i could have been a butt length at this stage but yeah that was a big chop phase i enjoyed it it was good um once my hair started getting to a twa i yeah nah, I, I really did not like how i looked in a twa maybe with like a mini mohawk but girl, I'm a long, I'm a long hair girl. Let's just say it. the next stage was the DIY stage. Yeah, I hear DIYs. <laughs> I was a DIYer. I was into Ambunu. I was into fenugreek. I was into aloe vera. I was into, I mean, hot oil treatments, hot concoction, moringa, you know flaxseed name it diy galore and diys are great if you have time for diys you've got the energy diys are great it's the safest way i guess when it comes to toxins to look after your hair there is the side of getting mold and bacteria and contamination in your you know products that you're making if you don't know what you're doing uh you know if you're not testing the ph if you're keeping them longer than their shelf life it can get a bit you know tricky particularly with the ph so i mean i'm not against diying but i know that it's something that i cannot do at this stage in my life girl i i blame my son when i became a mom i had no energy but for very few things in my life i've got no energy for drama I've got no energy for drama. I've got no energy to be spending hours in my hair. Like things need to function because the days just roll into themselves. It's like you don't know who you are. It's Monday, it's Tuesday, it's Wednesday. Oh, what day is this? Is it Thursday? Oh, is it April or November? Like you've got no idea. Like it's just the routine. The moment you wake up, you're changing your diaper, you're feeding, you're playing. My son, like when... <laughs> You're dealing with a young child they want your attention even after they're fed whatever they want to play they want to play so they want to be in the house we have to be out in the park or play groups playing with it like i don't have a life so who has time for diy it's not me the next stage was african threading i did a lot of african threading i loved african threading african threading was great but then i suffered a setback where it took my edges out 
that's when I was like, nah, I gotta slow down with that African threading. It's great. If you can make it work, great. But for me, yeah, there's a few things that made me stop. I'm gonna discuss that in a separate video because you guys have been asking. However, yeah, I went into the African threading phase where I was just wearing African threading. I'd have a little pom-pom, like a headpiece kinky one. He was so cute. One of my most viral videos on this channel is actually an African threading video where I made a wearable African threading style and people loved it. And yeah, I enjoyed that stage, but yeah, it didn't last. Then came the moisture stage where now I was really big on moisture. Mind you, all of these stages were focused on length. Like I wanted length throughout these stages, but now last year, 2023, got into moisture. Moisture, my God. Didn't I crack the cold with glycerin? Nailed it. If you want to keep your hair curly or coily in its natural state, you're suffering from dryness, gotta try glycerin. That phase did not go away because at the moment my hair is still, you know, in its natural state. So I love glycerin. Um, however, I rolled in quickly. I rolled quick, quickly into protein and the no comb, no heat phase where now I was like, no, we're not going to use any combs on our kinky hair. We're not going to be using heat and we're going to be using protein. I love this stage because it truly, truly allowed me to... I don't want to say bond with my hair, but you really get a feel for your hair. You get to enjoy your hair. It teaches you discipline. It retained the most length in my curly, coily, natural hair journey. And I definitely recommend if you're keeping your hair in its natural state, as in its natural curl, try some glycerin. Try to minimize or literally drop the combs. Um, minimize your heat and do protein treatments uh-huh i still stand by that if you're if you're not if you're just that curly natural those are game changers and i truly love those to this day i'm still a curly natural i still implement those love them fast forward to today i am actually moving on to the stage or the next stage of my natural hair journey and i literally do not know what that stage is going to be <laughs> all i know is that i I am liberating myself. I'm going to, I feel like all of these lessons, all these stages have accumulated of accumulated to this stage where I know my hair. I love my hair. I'm not trying to imitate any other race. Um, I'm at a stage where I want to enjoy my hair. I want to see my hair. I want to feel my hair. I want to look presentable, more presentable without wearing a wig. Um, and I don't know quite exactly how that looks like. I don't know whether I want to big chop my hair. I don't want to, I don't know whether I want to cut it shorter so it's more manageable. I don't know whether I want to dye it so to have more fun with it. I don't know whether I want to be a wash and go natural or a straight natural or a blowout natural or a protective style of natural. I don't know. I actually don't know, but I know that. I want to feel less pressure. I want to feel more flexible with my hair. I want to be more relaxed. I want to look more beautiful and I want to see my length or at least my texture or at least my fullness. Okay, gotta see some kind of characteristic of my hair and I want to be known for certain styles. One of the, I've never told you guys this, but one of the most uncomfortable things for me is to be seen in different styles, as in vastly different styles by the world. Like today, I mean, I'm straight, tomorrow I'm curly, and the next day I'm in a updo, the next day I'm in braids. I find that people get confused and it actually makes me uncomfortable. It makes me go like, oh, he doesn't know who I am or he thinks that's fake. It might be my hair, but I actually hate the attention that comes with that. So I feel like I want to have a signature style or I, I want to be known to have a certain style. So who knows what that means? Not me. I feel like natural hair 
it's like people are at different stages of their natural hair journey and a lot of the times we like to police each other and make each other feel like there is only one way and this is the best way and this is the only way and why are you doing that to your hair but at the end of the day i think every person is at a different journey every person has to be like be in your journey be at the stage in your journey where you are and <clears throat> i think loving our natural hair learning our natural hair embracing our natural hair was the aim of the natural hair community whatever you do post that is up to you but you have been exposed to what your true beauty is what your natural beauty is what your real texture is um, how to handle your hair how to deal with it etc so I, I don't really look at different naturals from myself the way I used to before. I would look at relaxed naturals or straight naturals or wash and go naturals like, oh, trying to create a different style. Oh, you're trying to mimic white people, etc. Not quite. I know some of us are there where we're trying to look different. We're trying to look like a different race. But I think a lot of us post the natural hair community hype are actually at a stage where it's just preference. What's easier? What's more practical for you in your life to deal with your hair? I feel like I need to do a live or a separate video about this. Girl, I've really spoken too much in this video. See you in the next one.